welcome to the world's biggest online homeopathy summit i am dr suman haldar your host today our next presenter is uh, dr subhra kanjilal uh, he will be presenting his topic necessity and utility of a common unified platform in homeopathy i i would like to ask dr subhra kanjilal who is homeopathic medical officer uh, under government of west bengal uh, please go ahead dr subhra okay thank you dr haldar uh, yes my presentation uh, before i start let me share my screen so that uh, you can at least uh, see what i am going to present now so is my screen visible to all yes yes okay thank you hi everybody uh, after this wonderful presentation by dr agarwal and uh, definitely he expressed his opinion that he is very much optimistic with the uh, proposed homeopathic outcome uh, for covid 19 and uh, we have already know, it is very much well known to all of us that uh government uh, is taking divergent uh, decisions regarding uh, covid-19 treatment regarding application of homeopathic medicines and ayush system of medicines to uh, covid-19 treatment uh, in this uh, scenario uh, my uh, may i start my speech and uh, before i start i must pay homage to uh, the eternal epoch maker of the history of medical science dr christian frederick samuel hanneman on his 266th birthday and yes mankind is truly passing through a very tough time uh, uh, because of this uh, covid-19 infection i pray to the almighty that uh, he may imbibe us with the power that we can win this battle <clears throat> now in this situation a conflict arose between different levels of the government of india once uh, the central council of research in homeopathy announced that arsenic album uh, 30th potency in specific dose can reduce uh, can be useful uh, as preventive to this infection subsequently by an order dated 1st april the ministry of ayush government of india they uh, said that or better to say they directed that making any propaganda claiming homeopathic medicines or ayush system of medicines can cure this infection this is restricted and punishable and now there is another u turn which came very recently uh, through the twitter and facebook accounts of uh, the ayush minister shri shripad yasho naik and he said that in goa they are going to introduce uh, the ayush system of medicines uh, for covid-19 treatment uh, along with the orthodox school of medicines so actually here comes the utility of today's topic <clears throat> especially when the government bodies and the ministries are getting divergent views they cannot unite for the cause of homeopathy and definitely for the cause of mankind for the sake of mankind and now in this particular situation an unofficial unified platform a common platform is highly required <clears throat> now uh, moving to my next slide uh, what will be the outcome of this discussion at the end of this discussion what will we find that common unified platform is the need of the day definitely this is the need of the day but uh, this is uh, uh, not only true with uh, the scenario which is running on now but uh, this was the need of the day since very long and for that purpose the unified platforms all over the world even all over the india that has emerged out and still even in these days these platforms are very much very much very much necessary a political platform is the only solution <clears throat> i will try to uh, uh, divide my speech in two parts firstly uh, a common unified platform is required and second portion is that that platform must be apolitical i will show evidences from history that uh, <clears throat> whenever there was political interference between the uh, homeopath between the uh, platforms for homeopathy that has done bad and not good and thirdly history shows how such unified apolitical platforms were proved to be beneficial for homeopathy and uh, during the course of my discussion i will discuss about it in detail how uh, even the largest and most i would like to repeat the largest and most widely accepted international level homeopathic organization like liga that was also corrupted before 1976 in which way i will discuss later on and uh, i think 
uh, that will clear up your confusions. Moving on to my next slide. Now, what are the problem with government bodies? We all know that there are several government bodies. It was existing prior to the emerging of any unified organization. And even now, these organizations are there. But still, the problems with government bodies remains the same. The bureaucrats are mostly innocent about the principles of homeopathy. And not only that, they are rather most likely to be biased and guided by the traditional ideas about the medicines. Because definitely they are not homeopaths and they have uh, no intricate knowledge of homeopathy. Secondly, health department is dominated by the orthodox school. And the interests and ideas of these orthodox schools are completely diagonally opposite to those of homeopathy. Now, will this not be too much to expect that they will uh, get rid of their own ideas and uh, interests and they will help for the cause of homeopathy? It will be too much to expect from them, especially when they are more or less when they are more or less over dominated by the financially stronger pharma companies. Just just for an example, uh, you all know you are all very much well conversant about the Pan Forty, and you know how much the ten tablet strip costs. And definitely, this will reduce for the time being. I must say, for ten days or fifteen days, your uh, gastric problems and your flatulence and acidity problems this can reduce. But just beside this, you try to remember just one dose of Nags Vomica. Say if the patient is of Nags Vomica, one dose of Nags Vomica can do the same effect even for longer time. So the revenue that is earned by the pharma companies is definitely cannot be fulfilled by the homeopathic companies because uh, we prescribe less as has uh, already been discussed in detail by Dr. Agarwal. Very nicely has discussed this. So we need to prescribe in minimum quantity if i'm not going for the quality but minimum quantity and that can act even for longer time so definitely we are not going to contribute a huge amount of uh, revenue that the orthodox pharma companies can generate next point is councils or boards are not exclusively formed by homeopaths yes there is no tangible reasons behind this why these bodies are not exclusively formed by the doctors of respective systems Administrative bodies, especially which uh, govern the system in the respective state or even uh, throughout the country, uh, they are not fully uh, constructed within the system. And uh, administrative councils, administrative bodies, councils, boards and whatnot, everywhere there is invasion of either some political figure or some uh, un- homeopathic persons who will definitely not go into the uh, intricacies of homeopathy. It is not possible for him to understand. And now coming to a very important point that government bodies cannot be a forum for setting up difference of opinions amongst few homeopathic representatives. Few homeopathic, few homeopathic representatives representing these bodies may always have some divergent views. Even government is having divergent views as far as COVID-19 treatment is concerned. So this is very common. And this is... Uh, I'm sorry, probably my screen sharing is uh, disturbed. Hello. Slides are not visible. Yeah. Uh, if uh, Dr. Haldar, if you can uh, take care of this so that we can move on there. Dr. Haldar, are you audible? Yeah, I'm, I'm audible. I'm audible. Yeah, yeah. Can you please? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, can you please uh, uh, make it visible on your part? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming, it's coming. Probably we were on third slide. Pardon? Probably we were on third slide. Yeah. Uh, so the government bodies cannot be a forum uh, for uh, setting up such differences which we were talking. And uh, definitely, uh, these official bodies cannot be a forum for uh, setting up all the differences. And uh, uh, also, <clears throat> which I was uh, talking actually, that, uh, I mean, uh, especially uh, these forum uh, may become public in few seconds, especially in the era of print and newspaper media. And already we are having so many people in our society 
who are uh, trying to turn homeopathy down and if this kind of difference of opinions come in public which is very common with any kind of uh, decisive approach uh, definitely that will not be a good message to the society for homeopathy and uh, also the different government bodies are having divergent views as far as the applicability of treatment that I have uh, said just now so uh, these print and telemedias will highlight this and that will in turn cause a bad for homeopathy now actually these discussions in my opinion should take place and difference of opinion must be settled inside our own camp and here comes the practicability of this unofficial common unified platform a platform is required to settle the uh, uh, controversies and only after that the representatives who are emerging out of that platform can speak and fight as one unified single body and they can represent the entire decision of the body i will show in later slides how these kind of resolutions arising out of such a unified common platform imposed and pressurized the liga to uh, withdraw their prevalent decisions and how that acted well for homeopathy and now especially in this uh, situation where government was not willing to introduce ayush uh, system of medicines two largest organizations of india namely the homeopathic medical association of india the homai and the institution of homeopaths of kerala ihk they came forward and submitted a letter uh, with three subsequent okay. reminders to pmo to the honorable prime minister claiming to have scientific research uh, in the homeopathic way yes. the letter yes. has been uh, provided to uh, the letter has been uh, sent to the authority by dr ashok kumar dash and dr ravi m nayar and this is the role which an organization can play they can always show the other side of the mirror and who knows that the other side can be even more brighter that can be even more beneficial for the mankind the next slide the next slide please yes uh, and now uh, the homeopathic brethren may fight in home but not in public what i was just discussing and if we have any claim on ordinary human faculty uh of reason and honesty we must submit to the most reasonable and realistic viewpoint and come out our home unified if we can show solidarity we will win we all know united we stand and divided we fall now recently few homeopaths were searching for bridge courses and they were misguided that if they can pursue this course jobs are assured so uh, these kind of uh, divided rules are always going to be played between uh, our uh, system to uh, turn us down and now here this is definitely harmful for homeopathy and here specially comes the role of a unified platform which can raise its voice and can reach the unified voice to the government authority and can turn their futile decisions into a perfect one which will not only do good for the existence and development of homeopathy but also will do good for the mankind Be because we all know that uh, uh, the tail may be different but the crow doesn't become a peacock with the tails definitely some of the isolated camps may carry some uh, favor with the authority today and some other tomorrow but the whole cause of homeopathy can be served in this way a democratic platform of homeopaths will allow uh, to place a debate with difference of opinion and majority's decision will emerge out which will definitely project the strongest voice in favor of homeopathy and now uh, kindly uh, move on to the next slide please hello kindly move on to the next slide please yes this is the problem with the political organizations now uh, the political organizations i will uh, say that uh, the, there is a political mandate to follow the high commands they cannot express their own opinion uh, publicly so they have to follow the political high commands and political high commands are not always uh, consisting of homeopaths and they cannot always uh, express the proper views uh, which can do good for homeopathy and definitely the next point which is the most important point that political mandate is there to oppose the rival political parties to establish their own existence and exactly this is the point which i wanted to emphasize that the unified platform must be a political that platform must not have any relation with the political parties because even if other political parties do good this party because of uh, its own existence because of this question of its own 
uh, propaganda to the common people. They have to oppose the other political party. This is their political mandate. And most likely they have to be biased by their political views. And obviously the political party members get less time to devote for the cause of homeopathy. And definitely the service for the mankind and the homeopathy as well gets minimized. Kindly to the next slide, please. And now, before I start discussing on this slide, I will tell you just uh, two or three words. Well, you see that every organization, there are two kinds of organizations. One group is there who are the quantity lover. Who are the quantity lover. They love with the quantity and they compromise with the quality and doesn't care about fig about whoever comes there, whoever goes there, that doesn't matter. They just want to gather the number. This is on one hand. And certainly the other side is who are not compromising with the quality, even they can compromise with the quantity and they believe the truth lies with minority. But at the same time, there's another proverb also, the majority must be granted, especially in this democratic region. So uh, a good organization must be a proper intermingling of these two. There must be the quantity where the quality should not be compromised. Just uh, uh, the first one, uh, some panelists said that they are not getting the video. Uh, so the first one, uh, uh, that was a tussle of Dr. Ella Twentyman and Dr. Jane Kanjilal in 29th International Homeopathy Congress, which was taking place at uh, Washington. And uh, there was a topic on symposium on homeopathic education. So the symposium on homeopathic education, while Dr. Twentyman was uh, going to speak on this, and uh, before I uh, discuss about this discussion, may I introduce Dr. Twentyman to you first. Dr. Twentyman was a faculty from Royal London Homeopathic Hospital. You know this hospital, this hospital used to issue DF home degree, which is even in these days considered to be one of the most prestigious degrees of the world. So this college, he, 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 he is actually from that college and definitely he was a quantity lover. And we all know that homeopathy has been attacked from outside. Yes, this is true. But at the same time, homeopathy has been attacked from within. And that is also the problem. Uh, and that is why a common unified platform is required because the attacks from within can be discussed within that platform. And the resolution that emerges out comes out with the homeopathic solidarity. What happened there, uh, Dr. Twentyman said during his speech that all the homeopathic principles were dogmas. I repeat, all the homeopathic principles were dogmas. Dr. Jane Kanjilal opposed him and he said, if a principle is to be condemned as dogma, one has to prove that it is baseless or outmoded. Without doing that, if anybody calls it a dogma, it only depicts to say the least his mental rigidity, laziness and opportunism such a bold opposition and what happened after this opposition i will tell you later on and this is the voice of a preacher and a true lover of homeopathy because this person was getting backed by the largest homeopathic organization of that day which was uh, the all india institute of uh, homeopathic aihma all india uh, homeopathic medical association aihma all india homeopathic medical association uh, I'm sorry, I was uh, fumbling for that. Now, uh, so uh, this is one example of what can happen with the quantitative faculty if there is compromising the quality. And now just coming to the second point, what happens with the political interference? Uh, this was in the late uh, 70s. Maybe I'm, I cannot exactly remember the year, but maybe uh, it was 78, 79, 1978, 79. Uh, the first homeopathy council of Sri Lanka was formed at that point of time. And he was nominated by Sri K. L. Sena Naike. He was the then health minister of Sri Lanka. And this council was formed under the chairmanship of Dr. C. V. S. Korea. But this was actually reconstituted later by the then health minister Sri Sena Naike because Dr. Korea was uh, not a person who will move according to the direction of Dr. Sena Naike, uh, Mr. Sena Naike. So he removed him and he put somebody else uh, according to his sweet will. And what happened finally, the entire organization got disrupted. Everything got ruined up, ending up in a mess. Now, uh, kindly move on to our next slide. Yes, this is the largest global organization 
LMHI, which was previously known as Liga. Uh, on the left side, we can find the uh, image of uh, the American homeopath, Dr. Roy Upham, who was the founder of this uh, organization. Uh, and this was actually founded in Rotterdam of Netherlands. Uh, and the physicians from Netherlands will be joining uh, us in the later part of this seminar. Uh, this organization was uh, formed in 10 September 1925 by 14 homeopaths and was constituted under the terms of Swiss civil law with Geneva designated with Geneva designated as its own registered office. And nowadays, this organization has moved its office to the residence of Hanuman at Germany. So this is the history of LMHI. And at that point of time, before 1974, which I was talking to you that I will tell you later on, uh, before uh, that time, uh, Liga was consisting of few Hanumanian homeopaths like Dr. T.P. Pascero of Argentina and Dr. P.S. Ortega of Mexico. But unfortunately, they never dared to oppose the anti hanumanian lobby because they were not backed up by any strong national organization. After 1974 battle by Dr. Kanjilal, an overwhelming majority was voted in favor of Hanumanian principles. And in Athens Congress in 1976, the whole table of LMHI was turned in favor of the Hanumanian principles. And that was heroically and effectively supported by those two doctors, Dr. Ortega and Dr. Paschero. At that point of time, what was happening actually, the Western homeopaths believed that unless one is an allopathic graduate, he cannot be termed as a doctor. And only allopathic graduates who believed with the law of similia, they could become the full-fledged members of LMHI. Institutionally taught Indian homeopaths and holders of government recognitions from India, they were not entertained at all. After continuous struggle for more than one day, on 20th May 1979, Dr. Kanjilal was able to have Dr. Bholanath Chakraborty, all of you know his name, Dr. Bholanath Chakraborty, as the Assistant National Vice President of Liga. And later on, Dr. Kanjilal admitted that he could win this battle single-handedly against 27 Western homeopaths only because he was backed by the resolutions from world's biggest national apolitical homeopathic organization that is the Homai. So now you can easily uh, get an idea that if an organization is uh, full filled with the allopaths who can only believe with uh, the law of similia and even may not practice pro it properly and even they have no uh, uh, courage to raise their voice against the anti hanumanian lobby, what kind of outcome from that organization can happen? Uh, the next slide, yes. Uh, so now this is the slide uh, which shows about the world's largest national organization that is the Homeopathic uh, Medical Association of India. Uh, on the left side, it is the photograph of the founder, president and president of honor of this organization, Dr. J. N. Kanjilal. And on the right side, it was AIIH, All India Institute of Homeopathy and AIHMA, the organization that I have named just now. These two organizations were prevailing at that point of time and they were the largest organizations uh, in the India at that point of time. These two organizations started to converge and they joined together in a convention which was named as the Convention of Homeopaths of India. It was taking place on 26th and 27th of October 1975 at Baligan Shikha Shodhan of Kolkata and the single organization emerged out as the Homeopathic Medical Association of India. We may feel that what happens, whether these two organizations can emerge or not, just feel the AIIHMA and AIIH, these two organizations in their meeting held in Delhi on 19 December 1964, these organizations decided to forego its long cherished name and decided to march with each other. Just think, they have decided to forego with their name, their fame and everything they have earned by their, uh, uh, actually these were hard earned. Any name in homeopathy is always hard earned. So we must learn the level of devotion of the organizers who could even forego their name, their entity and everything for the sake of greater cause of homeopathy. And only because of such kind of greatest devotion Humai has emerged as world's biggest organization and still holding the biggest democratic platform for discussion on homeopathy. And now you have seen that the two organizations, Humai and IHK, has done good for the uh, uh, 
for the approach to PMO for COVID-19 infection, uh, that they uh, approached that uh, homeopaths may be given an opportunity to make research and do all these things. And obviously, in India, we are having BHMS course, we are having degree courses and all these things. These are the contribution of uh, Homai. Uh, and uh, definitely, any constructive, all India-wise, I mean, national-wise homeopathic unified platform will be doing this good. To the next slide, please. And in the next slide, because this is an organization-based seminar, I would like to uh, utter a few lines uh, from the greatest organizers of India. And uh, this is written here. It is only these menaces. What are the menaces? That is jealousy, selfishness, careerism, ambition for money, name, fame, all these things. These are actually, we've, we search for these things. It is only these menaces that brings in the necessity of efficient leaders with qualities of unconditional sympathy and affection for all fellow beings belonging to same society or fraternity with a sea of tolerance, with a sea of tolerance, patience and tactfulness, with unshakable zeal for the aims and objectives of the organization completely free from any of these vices. This has been expressed by Dr. Jain Kanjilani in one of his uh, letters to some of his disciples. Now, uh, with all these things, I hope uh, I can make you understand why a unified common platform is required, which can only work for the development of homeopathy. And before I end, I repeat that we must remember one thing, united we stand and divided we fall. Finally, I thank the organizers for giving me opportunity to share something with you in this international platform and also thank you audience or viewers for hearing me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Shubha Yeah, Kanjilani. I am watching on board for 30 seconds. Just please, yeah. Four, five, six. You can see on your screen the poll. Do you agree that a common unified platform is required? Answer is, options are one platform for the world, one platform for each country like India, etc. One platform for each state and union territories of India. Ten more seconds. Three, two, one. Yeah. You see, uh, very good mixed response. One platform for the world is 59%, that is 43%. And one platform for each country like India, that is the big, uh, that has gained the biggest number of votes. That is the poll is not visible in uh, uh, screen, okay, actually, okay. doctor. Yeah, yeah, it's visible now. It is visible now. Uh, one platform for the world. Uh, it is 43%. One platform for each country like India. It is 48%. And one platform for each state and even territory of India. That is 9% only. Okay. So they are not going uh, into uh, the Shubhra. analysis of this result. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Shubhru, sir. I was going to your uh, lecture. Wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Please you accept have, my regards, have, sir. A very, very aptly timed. It's a wonderful presentation and very much required in today's time. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, just two days ago, just yesterday, you were also addressing the uh, guests uh, and uh, the audience on Facebook, and you have also mentioned for a unified platform over there. Yes, and, you uh, all feel that this is the time. Thank you. Yes, Thank yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, on Facebook, Dr. Samit Hazra has said it is a very good presentation. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Hazra. Uh, Dr. Pralay Sharma, sir, has said uh, that it is a very good end of her. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Polami. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Devabrata Malik said that it is very good. Okay. Thank you.
please stay connected on different platforms actually we are live that's why yeah dr shami dr himanshi rathor has said it is very good presentation thank you someone has raised question for disadvantage of omai can i have just 30 seconds for this yeah 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 of course you have that's what oh, yeah. you are uh, uh disadvantage there are so many disadvantages because uh, at times omai is uh, overruled by the homeopathic pharma companies also this is not always that allopathic pharma companies overrule us homeopathic pharma companies at times overrule us also and uh, they uh, forces us they gives us money and they forces us to make propaganda for their patent products and all these things and definitely these are not homeopathic and this is the main problem uh, with uh, any organization that for making their meetings and all these things we have to have some funds and these funds are coming from these pharma companies who forces us to uh, make a propaganda of their products and in most of the companies their products are not homeopathic and that is the main uh, lacuna and i think whom i should discuss on this how to uh, eliminate these things and how to move on for the betterment of homeopathy thank you for raising this question very apt question i was missing this point thank you so much uh thank you dr subhra thank you thank you so much dr halda